Good morning, and welcome again to one of our fireside chats. Uh, my name is Pastor Carl Ziegler, and I want to say to you, Happy Thanksgiving. I'm coming to you from my office here at First Lutheran Church. I know the last couple weeks I've I've had the lights off because it's a dark time. It's a scary time, um, <clears throat> but it's a it's a dark day out, and so I turned the lights off to kind of see what it looked like, and it was just too dark in here. So let's get on with it. Let's talk a little bit about the news. Can we do that? First of all, Fairway did not come out with their ad this week, so I have no price updates to give you other than we are getting our crown roast from there. I'm going to be picking that up today. And yes, uh, for this Thanksgiving, we're having well over 20 people over for Thanksgiving. Uh, some of them are complete strangers. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really kidding about that. Uh, we're just having family over, about eight, nine people all together, for those of you who are kind of crowd police. But speaking of Crown, uh, season four of The Crown dropped on Netflix. It's worth the watch, especially if you kind of like knowing about you know the royals and if you have Netflix. More locally, don't forget to call in to worship and sign up. Now, some of you are trying to already call in and reserve your spot for Christmas Eve. Come on, people. Let's get through November. This is not even uh, or this is not even December yet. Quit that. Don't do that. One last thing. Now you may notice, I don't know if you can tell or not. Okay. You may notice that my face is growing a little scruffy and and my hair. That's because I've decided to grow out my beard and my hair and not shave it again until we get an all clear for this dreaded, dreaded pandemic. That's not when the vaccines come out or anything like that. This is when we finally feel it's safe to go back in the water. It's sort of prophetic. Uh, I thought it better than walking around naked for three years like Isaiah or laying on my side for an extended period of time, like Ezekiel. So, some thoughts about Thanksgiving this year. So what about Thanksgiving? What about this strange season that we're in? What might you say about it? Well, this COVID thing drags on and on. Maybe you might say, well, my family's not getting together for Thanksgiving because they don't want to infect me or they don't want to be infected by me. Or maybe this season my candidate lost, at least we're pretty sure I lost. Uh, I, I, I lost my job because of COVID. I hate these masks. I hate life right now. 2020 has been one long colonoscopy prep. That's what it's been. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Uh, but there's never enough money in the account, and just when we seem to get our heads above water, something happens and we get knocked down again, no matter what we do, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice? Rejoice for what? High blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, heart disease, cancer, aging? On top of that, COVID, heartache, friends and family who are at an infinite distance, quarantines, lockdowns, give thanks for that. Rejoice for that. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Pray without ceasing. I'm, I'm weary at praying, at making, at doing. It doesn't seem to do any good. God has lost my address. He doesn't hear my prayers. He doesn't have time for me. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks. 
give thanks in all circumstances? I lost a loved one this year. I got divorced. I lost my house. The kids never call. I get sick. I haven't seen my kids or grandkids since March. Give thanks? you you got to be kidding, right? Give thanks for emptiness. Give thanks for loneliness. Give thanks for pain. Give thanks for isolation. Give thanks for COVID. It's got to be a joke, right? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice, because nothing can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus. Not life, not death, not angels, not good times, not bad times, not anything that hell and throw at us. Not only that, but Jesus, our Emmanuel, is with us always, even until the very end of the age, and he's enfleshed himself in God's people and simple stuff, like bread and wine. Rejoice because he made you his in a flood of grace, calling you by name in an event that most of you cannot remember. What a picture of grace. You did nothing. He did it all, even canceling your sin on a stark wooden cross and in baptismal waters. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Pray because we have a God who listens and hears and promises to answer even before the words are spoken or thought. Pray because the Father invites us through his son to call him Abba, Daddy. Pray because he promises to hear and to answer. Pray because your prayers make you more dependent on the one who can and does hear and answers in his good time and according to his pleasure. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks. Give thanks because Jesus, God himself, has cured our greatest sickness and answered our greatest need, forgiveness. And through Jesus, he has made you his eternally. All of us approach this Thanksgiving with varying levels of thankfulness, varying shades of it. For some, if you are only measuring by what you can see, you've got many reasons to be thankful. you got your family, you have your health. You have enough money, maybe even more than enough money. You've not been infected yet. For others, reasons for thankfulness are less obvious. All of us, all of us here are living under the pall of the virus. Yet I would suggest that while family and good health, even national stability and the like are important, that's not why God deserves our deepest thanks. I would suggest that God deserves our deepest thanks because he's cured our deepest need our sin sickness. For indeed, for our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So whether in earthly terms this year has been a good year, which it has not been, or one that's been mixed with sorrow, or one that's just been downright dismal, which it has been for many of us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because he has healed us, and his mercy which shows itself most wondrously in the brokenness and the glory of the cross endures forever for us. This is most certainly true, now and always. Have a blessed Thanksgiving my dear people, even in these times. Amen. Just a few reminders as we move into this COVID Advent season. Yes, this next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. Be in God's Word daily. Saturate yourself in it and in prayer. I firmly believe that's what's going to help us get through these times. Worship. If you can, in the flesh, with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Call in. 
sign up. If not, worship with us on the live stream. Don't just watch it with a cup of coffee. Participate. Finally, also, be a little Christ where he has placed you. God bless you. I will see you next week. Until then, amen.